send to you a comforter. And that comforter, it'll be better for you than when I'm still physically present. Because the comforter, the Holy Spirit, isn't limited to one body, one place like Jesus was. The comforter, the Holy Spirit, will dwell within every believer and never leave them, will always be with them. If we don't know this truth, if we don't understand this biblical reality, if we don't believe in the Holy Spirit more than just in the head, deep down into our, our, our soul, if we don't know how to access that Holy Spirit, we miss an incredible resource. So now imagine that your lost time, you are driving. It wasn't on the mountain, but you are driving. And there's someone in the back seat. But they keep quiet. You find out later, all you had to do was ask. And that person actually knew the way. But you have to ask. You have to know they're there, present with you. Now part of the problem with this analogy, or with this reality, taking this analogy into reality, of the Holy Spirit being in us, God's presence in us, is so many Christians think that life ought to be easy. Well, God never said it would be easy. In fact, Jesus said it would not be. Jesus said there's going to be trouble until God comes and cleans up the face of the earth and Jesus reigns in his second coming. We're going to live as Christians in the face of mess. We're going to experience brokenness. We're going to experience mess. We're going to experience difficulties. And unfortunately, people, when they experience the difficulties, if they don't know these principles, they begin to rage at God. God, why aren't you present? Why aren't you here? Why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you doing something? Why aren't you saying something? The whole time, God has said, my Holy Spirit's in you. If you're a follower of Jesus, I place my spirit in you as a comfort, as a guide. And while we're raging at God for God's absence, the Holy Spirit is in us, trying to speak to us, trying to prompt us, trying to help us, trying to comfort us in the tragedy and the pain. There's a lot of us who... Um, We, we, we believe in God. We know the story of Jesus. We believe in Jesus. But if we take the scripture seriously, Jesus, when he rose, he's now up in heaven. And so those are wonderful things to believe because they're realities. But if we don't believe in the Holy Spirit, if we don't know how to access the Holy Spirit, It's like having a GPS that you don't, how to, don't know how to turn on. It's like going out west somewhere in a hunt and having a guide in your hunting party who spent his life on these mountains, knows his way around and knows where the trophy elk is that you're hoping to shoot. And the guide isn't going to tell you unless you ask. And so you stumble around the mountains in your ignorance. Who would do something like that? A hunter going after a trophy is smart enough to figure out if anybody knows the mountains, if anybody knows the way, if anybody knows where the elk are. And is sure going to be smart enough to say, please, would you tell me when I get up tomorrow morning which way I ought to head? In fact, would you go along with me? So, today's invitation is, believe in the Holy Spirit. Not just in some theoretical idea, but believe in the Holy Spirit in the way the scriptures talk about the Holy Spirit as literally a living guide, a presence that will go with us, whatever and through ever, whatever life throws at us. The Holy Spirit, we're recognizing, 
has the eternal attributes and nature of God. It's part of the Godhead. And it's the aspect of God, the form of God, that is now present on the face of the earth. So let's recognize the ways that the Holy Spirit has these attributes. First, and um, this is uh, on the back side of the prayer guide, uh, if you want to write in um, the insert in your um, bulletin, the yellow paper, um, what we're going to be running through here. And if you want to write in the words that are blank and then look up the scriptures later, it'll be a way of deepening what we review. So the Holy Spirit speaks according to Revelation 2.7. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The Holy Spirit speaks. Now, it's less often an audible voice. There are some people who have literally heard the Holy Spirit speak in what they describe as their, he their ears hearing. But I've never experienced that. I don't know anybody personally who has. But I have experienced the Holy Spirit speaking. And I believe everyone in this place has spiritual ears. And if we're believers, we heard the, we heard the Holy Spirit speak. The Holy Spirit is the one that uh, prompted us to say yes to Jesus. And if we've been reading through the scriptures and we're reading over a passage that is very, very familiar and all at once something just leaps off the page. That's the Holy Spirit speaking. Pay attention. This principle is for now. The Holy Spirit speaks intuitively in the, in, in, in the Spirit. And so the last 15 years of my life, one of my pursuits has been which I'm advocating today. One of my pursuits has been, God, would you please help me to learn better how to hear your voice? Would you increase my capacity to hear? Would you give me the wisdom to know when you're trying to get my attention? So I might hear the comfort and the challenge and the conviction and the guidance. And as I've asked and I've pled and I've invited, God has been abundantly faithful in improving my hearing. And I'm so grateful. Again, for me it's never been an audible voice, but a stirring. And I hear the voice of God through other people. The Holy Spirit speaks. Pastoral team several years ago made it as one of our goals to learn collectively as a team to better discern God's voice, to be listening for God's voice in the speaking within the team, in the prayer times, in the worship. The Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit helps us. Romans 8 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. So, especially at a time of vulnerability, we become aware if we're paying attention to that empowerment of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit prays for us. The second half of Romans 8, 26. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. So there's a deep kind of empathy. The Holy Spirit is interceding and praying and helping. The first time I found this verse, First time the Holy Spirit brought it to me was in my, my own two-year long breaking time of, of descent into intense conflict, a, a refinement by fire time where I got to very, very low places. This verse was one of them that uh, God used to... Um, lead me through to save me not in the salvation way but in its broader definition way when I came across this scripture and the Holy Spirit prompted me to pay attention and I realized that in the face of this incredible breaking 
this incredibly intense emotional pain. The Spirit of God was helping and was interceding on my behalf. Why was that so important? Why did that matter so much? It mattered so much partly because of the intense pain I was in. It also mattered because in spite of being a pastor and continuing to preach and continuing to lead, I had gotten so low, I hardly knew how to pray. I could pray for the people, I could pray for situations, but my own pain was so deep, I hardly knew how to pray for my own place. Pain has that capacity, especially emotional pain. And then I found this verse. I believe the Holy Spirit led me to this verse. And suddenly I realized that when I would go back into the prayer closet that I was using at that time in that church facility, when I would go back into that prayer closet and I literally would find myself on the floor crying out to God, groaning before God, and couldn't even put into words the pain According to this scripture, God was taking those groanings of the heart and God was interpreting it. The Holy Spirit was interpreting it according to the will of the Father. Do you realize how empowering just that information is when you stand on it? It didn't solve things, not for quite some time. It didn't heal things immediately. All of that took time. But suddenly, I could, with greater confidence, deepen my trust. The Holy Spirit helps us. The Holy Spirit prays for us. Those are precious, precious things. Ten years later, after having embraced this text, when late in the evening, we got a phone call that our son-in-law had been struck by lightning and we best packed funeral clothes though he was still alive and come to Florida I didn't get any sleep that night that was one of the darkest nights of my life there's something about your children there's something about a father being powerless I literally just paced were successful at getting tickets but they weren't going out to early the next morning and I just paced and I cried out to God and I stood on this verse by now I had 10 years of history of standing on this principle and I just I walked up to the window in our great room and I said God I don't even know how to pray but I'm trusting that you're taking the groanings of my heart Holy Spirit yet speaks. The Holy Spirit helps. The Holy Spirit prays. And just because there's guests here, I'll tell you um, that in that time, in that story, in that situation, um, we received a miracle. Eric's healthy and strong and fathered our grandchildren and doctors uh, said it was a miracle I always hesitate to um, in other words when I tell the story I'm just so so deeply grateful but obviously not every story ends that way and yet God is faithful in fact he in the Hebrews 11 faith chapter it says that all that long list of people they're commended for their faith, yet none of them received what they were promised because God had something better. We've tended to define faith as God answers our prayer and gives us what we want in the here and now. Hebrews 11 says, no, no, no. That happens sometimes, and the mystery of God is why, you no, know, I don't know, why is Eric well today and others who prayed and interceded and wanted an answer, they didn't get the answer they wanted. I don't know. That's God's mystery. What we know is God remains good. And what we know is that even in the Hebrew 11 faith chapter, when 
their prayers weren't answered at that time. They are answered in God's time. So the Holy Spirit speaks, the Holy Spirit helps us, the Holy Spirit prays, and in John 14, the Holy Spirit teaches and guides us. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father sends in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. The Holy Spirit calls us to God's work, Acts 13, 20. Or 13.2, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. And we each have a gift. We each have a contribution to make. If we're not paying attention to that voice of the Holy Spirit, we're going to miss out on the blessing of what was our unique intended purpose in God's world. And the Holy Spirit convicts and comforts is the final words to insert in your outline. Convicts. And that's not just in that initial bringing us to Christ. It's that daily opportunity to get our lives cleaned up. The Holy Spirit convicts and comforts us, which is a precious, precious privilege if we but cooperate with it. Acts 9.31, the church living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit increased in number. The second thing we recognize about the Holy Spirit is how it is we might receive the Holy Spirit. Well, Acts 2.38 says we begin with repentance and baptism. And so those who have never accepted Christ, that's the way to, um, to access this living guide. We asked Christ into our life through repentance and we receive water baptism and then the scriptures promise us that deposit will be made, that presence will be given. Acts 2.38, Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So everyone who's a believer has the Holy Spirit in them you have the GPS. Now the question becomes, do you know how to access it? Well, the way to better access it is to express desire for more of the Spirit. Luke eleven thirteen. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So for years now, I don't let a day go by without asking God to give me a stronger anointing of His Holy Spirit. And I try to remember throughout the day as I encounter challenges in ministry or even as I'm celebrating, just asking God to give me a stronger anointing of His Holy Spirit. The scriptures promise us if we ask, he'll be happy to cooperate. And the Holy Spirit is like a flow. We want it to be like water going through us out to the world. And the third open spot in the outline, gather with others in prayer. All the disciples were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. They gathered together to pray. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Here in our congregation, we, we practice that in Sunday school. We practice it in small groups. But gathering together with others to share our needs, to appeal for um, encouragement, to appeal for prayer, to pray for one another, to advocate sit before God with the scriptures open gather with others in prayer I'm delighted with how much our facility is now being used one of those that pleases me immensely every Friday morning early in the morning a small group of young men from Conestoga Christian School students come through the, uh, the door and gather in the youth room on their own initiative this is student-led, student-initiated young men. 
from Conestoga Christian, gather in the youth room, and they pray. Beautiful. High school students, young men, gathering together to pray. How will the Holy Spirit help you emerge victoriously? Well, first of all, by renewing your mind, Romans 12, 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, because the way the world thinks is a trap. So we want to think differently. We want to think according to reality, according to God's reality. So don't conform to the pattern of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and powerful will. Satan is the author of lies. He's the father of lies. And the primary way that Satan keeps even unbelievers entrapped and ineffective is by having us think according to the world's way instead of thinking according to God's realities. And so over a lifetime, we ought to be inviting the Holy Spirit to be renewing our minds, transforming the mind according to the insights and the principles and the truths of God. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. I said earlier that reading through Scripture, and something will leap off the page. The work of the Holy Spirit, bringing a truth so that you can think differently. Some of us get entrapped by paying attention to the world's way of saying we're worthless. We're scum. By beating us down and we believe that voice. The Holy Spirit would want to renew the mind to help us see ourselves as valued as God's children. Others of us, the world and Satan does the opposite. We believe we are extra, extra special. And we get an entitlement mentality. And we get a superiority mentality. Either of those extremes leads to bondage and brokenness. We are loved to children of God. So are our enemies. So is everybody else. We need to think according to the principles of God. And the Holy Spirit helps to renew the mind. The Holy Spirit will redeem our actions. And the Holy Spirit will empower our witness. Who of us doesn't want to be more effective? Who of us doesn't want to hear the words, well done? Who of us doesn't want it regularly? Who of us wouldn't want it when we get to the gates on the other side? The work of the Holy Spirit is to guide you, empower you, comfort you, convict you. Believe in this Holy Spirit, not as some philosophical concept, but as some Deep knowing. Amen. Amen.